welcome everyone. Thanks for uh, for joining uh, uh, our webinar uh, around uh, around reboarding um, and uh, a special welcome to uh, to our guests uh, Roberto and Taylor from Viceroy um, who will be introducing themselves uh, shortly. Just a, a quick introduction uh, from me. Uh, I'm Sveder. I'm uh, uh, representing Apical. Um, I'll give a short intro on, on, on Apical uh, after uh, our guests, uh, the way it should be. Um, with me is uh, is my colleague Peter, and uh, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be asking uh, Roberto and Taylor a lot of stuff about how they have uh, handled uh, the lockdown situation and the reopening uh, at uh, Viceroy. Uh, thanks, Roberto and Taylor, for uh, for joining us. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, yeah, to hosting you, and uh, I'd like to give you the introduction to uh, to quick, quickly introduce yourselves. Uh, let's start uh, with you, Taylor. Sure. Good morning. Um, good afternoon. I think even good evening to some of the people on the call. Um, Swader and Peter, we're super excited to be on this call with you today, and thank you for all of the time you've spent with us configuring our app and helping us deploy it out to our colleagues. Um, my name is Taylor Karlovenik. I'm the Human Resources Manager in the Viceroy Hotel Group Corporate Office. Um, I've been with Viceroy for just over two years and in Human Resources for a bit over four years. Three of those years I've spent in hospitality, specifically in hotels, and then the other time I was in uh, the finance and technology sector. Um, at Viceroy, I work very closely with our HR and L&D team on a variety of projects and initiatives that we put out to our different hotels and properties. Um, those projects and initiatives range from recruiting, employee engagement, benefits, our HRIS system. Um, and in the past couple months, they've evolved a lot around um, the pandemic. And then in the past week, a uh, couple of weeks to a month, we've been working with Epical um, on, on, on reboarding all of our colleagues. Um, so with that, I'd like to pass it off to Roberto to introduce himself. Mm, thank you, Taylor. And thank you again, Sweder and Peter, for, for having us. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to, to our audience. Uh, my name is Roberto Vizcaino. I'm the Vice President of Learning and Development. Uh, I work very closely with, with Taylor, which is uh, great. And uh, what I do in, for Vicero Hotel Group is to create the systems and programs for our colleagues to learn uh, and grow within the organization. Um, I have uh, close to 20 years of experience in hospitality and eight of them have been in, in Viceroy. And, uh, and despite the, the, the times that we are living in, uh, we are having a great time and, and really enjoying working uh, on, on different projects. So thank you. Great, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Just, uh, yeah, some, some practical, um, information before we start. Um, there's a chat uh, that you can use um, yeah, just to, to uh, have some, some conversations. And then there's uh, uh, in the bar in your screen, there's a Q&A section where you uh, can ask uh, questions uh, to Roberto and Taylor. And uh, you know, we will try to address your questions either during um, uh, the webinar, depending on the nature of the question, or we will save it uh, uh, for a Q&A at the end. Um, I'll give the board back to you, Roberto, uh, for, uh, yeah, for uh, an introduction of, uh, of Viceroy. Um, so uh, I'll pass it yeah. to you. And, uh, Thank you, Sweller. So I will be sharing my, my screen uh, what we will do, so our uh, our participants uh, know, I will be sharing my screen from time to time whenever the topic uh, is, is is relevant. But I promise everybody, it won't be uh, death by by PowerPoint. But there are certain points we want to make that uh, then I, I will be sharing my screen. So I hope now you are seeing Vicer Hotels and Resort logo. Perfect. Um, and so, well, uh, uh, as mentioned, we re are representing Vicero Hotel Group, and this year we are actually celebrating our 20th anniversary, uh, which means that we have been uh, around long enough to have established ourselves as a reputable brand 
uh, with a strong brand, brand identity, and, and you will see a glimpse of this. Uh, yet we are still young and nimble enough uh, as a company to be fresh, innovative, and, and also daring. Uh, which, all, which is something that is helping us to meet our guest needs and really create memorable ex experience, experiences, which is what we are here to do. Uh, we are as far from a cookie cutter as you can, as you can be. Uh, there is a great diversity in our, in our portfolio. Uh, we have 14 uh, operating hotels and, and there are a few more exciting uh, projects coming in, in our pipeline. But they are all so different and unique uh, that I think that's what makes us uh, special. And also the service that we provide uh, in, every, uh, in, in every of those hotels. Um, but also in order to help our guests to easily navigate to the exact experience they want to, they want to have, uh, we have uh, three different tiers, which I'd like to briefly uh, present to you and, and, and to our guests. Uh, the, the first one is the, the icon uh, collection. And as you can see on the screen, uh, uh, the, the, the words that we are using to describe it is epic, uh, is striking, uh, iconic, luxurious. This is uh, where, where, well, you, you can see in the, in the images, uh, great experiences are happening in, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this tier. The second tier um, is the Viceroy lifestyle uh, series that is high energy, it's provocative, it's playful, uh, it's a lot of fun uh, to be in, in those hotels. Uh, and the third one is actually the Viceroy Urban Retreats. And, uh, and this is more bold, daring, and fun, and young. Uh, so this is the, the three tiers that we have in our company. And, uh, and, and obviously, you, are more, you will be more than welcome to visit us as soon as you, uh, as you come to the United States. Well, <laughs> you've definitely given me uh, some uh, some lust for travel there, uh, Robert. <laughs> After uh, six months uh, of of only seeing uh, my house in the supermarket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and as, uh, you, as you will see during today's presentation, we also have very safe hotels where you can have uh, a lot of fun. And I heard you're opening up one uh, one in Europe as well, so that that might be. Uh, uh, Correct. Option, uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we are opening in December a hotel in, in Kaponek in, in Serbia. It's going to be a, a very exciting uh, ski resort. Nice. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks for the intro. I'll, I'll just take uh, uh, the stage for, for just a small introduction into Apical because I can understand that, that not everyone um, on the call knows uh, uh, who Apical is. Um, so let me just uh, yeah, briefly explain a bit about, uh, about us. We're a, uh, a scale up from the Netherlands, founded in, in 2012. Um, and what we do, we have a, a, a digital platform to uh, support companies uh, with their onboarding. Um, you know, we uh, operate uh, throughout three offices, HQ in Amsterdam, also in London and Tel Aviv work closely with a lot of global partners also in the in the US. Uh, we have 300 plus customers and and you know we um, we service a lot of international clients uh, can do that in a lot of languages. And well, if I may, I don't think we are seeing your your screen. No, it's, it's ah. You're not seeing my screen. Well, we see a beautiful black screen. <laughs> my apologies. No, my no, apologies. no problem. Um it was beautiful, though. <laughs> a beautiful. And how about now? Yeah, better. Are you seeing this? Yes. Yeah, so I mentioned we uh, operate an onboarding platform. And what we are about is using technologies, using technology to make uh, onboarding uh, simple, fun, and engaging. And what we have done in the past period is use our same platform for a different purpose, and that is uh, reboarding. Um, so, you know, there's a, a lot of elements from onboarding that you can, um, yeah, uh, uh, compare to uh, what's happening now with, uh, with reboarding. So the, the yeah, uh, the situation is the same. You're going from an old context 
so the old normal, so to say, and with onboarding an old uh, job, uh, and you're jumping into something unknown, uh, which is uh, a new context, so the new normal that everyone is talking about. The big difference is that you are not talking about individual uh, new employees, but you're talking about basically everyone, and that brings with itself uh, some some extra challenges. Um, main thing is uh, in this situation all your employees have mixed emotions depending on the situation that they are in depending on their personality uh, depending on how you as a company are are handling the situation uh, so it could be negative emotions it could be uh, positive emotions you know we've listed a few here you can be proud about your company <laughs> on, on how they've tackled it so I think your screen is still uh... Um, not not on the right slide, I guess. Okay. Um, well, you know, I'll just uh, do it uh, uh, nice. <laughs> verbally then, because I don't want to uh, waste time uh, uh, tackling this uh, this issue. Mm. Um, <clears throat> uh, what it does bring with itself, uh, you know, pre-lockdown, building up to the lockdown is uh, a level of uncertainty. And then during the lockdown, this level of uncertainty might have decreased because you as a company have uh, been able to mitigate it, have uh, been able to communicate with your employees about it. So the level of uncertainty uh, dropped a bit. And then leading up to uh, the, in your case, uh, Roberto and Taylor, reopening, that level of uncertainty uh, uh, has increased a bit again. Um, so in this webinar, what we are trying to do is, is hear from you uh, uh, how you have been able to cope with uh, all these aspects that increased uncertainty uh, uh, during the lockdown and leading up to the reopening. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm first, I'm a bit curious on, on yeah, the sequence of, of events uh, leading up to the lockdown, uh, throughout the lockdown, uh, and now going into the reopening. Um, maybe you can you can tell a bit more about that, uh, 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 Taylor. Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's pretty important to understand the whole timeline and, and where we are now. So starting in February to early March, um, we started learning a lot more about coronavirus, its spread, its symptoms, um, and we started to see it introducing itself into the travel industry. Um, Mid-March, we began to even more closely monitor um, with the World Health Organization and the CDC, and we noticed an increase in cancellations um, and then a decrease of normal patter uh, travel patterns. And what I mean like that by that is if you we're looking at airline bookings, you saw an immediately de decrease of those. Um, so by sort of tracking all this information and knowledge, we realized that we needed to adapt our work and working style to ensure the safety of our colleagues and guests and to comply with newly implemented orders. Um, so in the middle of March, we proactively closed our corporate headquarters in Los Angeles with the intent and anticipation that we'd probably be back mid to late April. Uh, as you can see today, we're all in different offices, so we still haven't returned back. Um, and we've had to sort of plan around that and keep our, our minds open to, to new things. Um, so March 20th, we began closing our hotels. Um, we just didn't have occupancy. Lots of everyone basically stopped traveling and it was unsafe to travel. Mm -hmm. um, so we closed March 20th. We were lucky, however, to be able to keep two hotels in San Francisco open which allowed us to keep our finger on the pulse and stay aware of the current climate. And we were able to firsthandedly experience what travel did look like during coronavirus and how to adapt our business to it. Um, we still maintained a pretty low occupancy um, and with a lot of our hotel doors closed, we unfortunately had to make really tough decisions uh, in terms of our staffing. So we had to furlough about 85% of our total staff across our portfolio. Um, which was super challenging and, and heartbreaking because um, our colleagues truly are the heart of our hospitality business. So um, sort of seeing them go for a bit was, was a challenge for us and sad. Um, then in early June to so about where we are now, uh, we had to make another hard decision in terms of our corporate office and furlough about 20% of that team. 
Um, so with this coronavirus and timeline came a lot of hard decisions and choices um, that had to be made by the business. Um, and then now we're in mid-July where we've begun to become more optimistic um, and we have began to reopen and resume operations in some of our hotels, which um, is, is making everyone happier. And we began to bring back colleagues with the intent of having the remainder of our properties opened um, by August, September, October. That must have been been quite a uh, yeah strange and hectic uh, period. And and in in those times of crisis, normally you you try to cling on to something uh, that that you're familiar with. Um, and and um, in some cases, uh, what I've heard from from other companies is that that their company culture has played uh, a vital role uh, throughout uh, the, the past period. Um, how, how has that been for you, uh, guys, uh, Roberto? Sorry, I was mute. Yeah. In, in Bicero, you pay five bucks when, when you talk when it being, being mute, so I would owe you five <laughs> euros in your case. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. The, the culture in a company is, is so important because uh, it, it kind of... Is, is, you, is the compass and, and you base your decisions uh, based on, on this culture. And, and we are, I think in, in Vicero, we are very lucky that we have a very strong internal culture that is represented into what we call the Vicero ideology. And the Vicero ideology represents the heartbeat of the organization and, uh, and it defines why we do uh, what we do. And every, every decision we make is done through the lenses of this uh, Vicero ideology. And I'd like to share with you uh, uh, this is this is our our ideology. Uh, it has uh, a number of, of very powerful and, and a strong statements that really governs what we do and and all the th decisions that we make. Um, but when we when we are starting this process and and, and the sequence of of uh, um, that, that that Taylor described, we really focus on on three of these elements. Uh, uh, the first one is that we are hosts first and always, and we understand how important safety it is for our guests and our colleagues, but let's not forget that nobody goes to a hotel to get bored. So uh, yes, uh, our hotels in reopening are safe. Uh, we, are, we are using and, and applying all the, most, all the safety measures that, that there are in the market. We, we develop a, a very uh, powerful health and hygiene task force. So safety, it, it is absolutely, but let's not forget, people want to have fun as well. And they want to forget that they've been in lockdown for a number of months and we are trying to create those spaces for them. At the same time, that we apply the same sentiment to our colleagues. We, uh, and, and a way to be a, a host first and always is to making sure you are welcoming them uh, in, the, in the best way possible. And we actually were able to achieve this with, with the app uh, that we, that we partnered with you. Um, the, the second element is um, that being thoughtful uh, in, in every detail. And, uh, and you are thoughtful in every detail by listening deeply, by, uh, by demonstrating empathy with, with guests and colleagues. Everybody has gone through very difficult times, and, and we are in this so-called new normal, which uh, hopefully won't be normal anymore, or, or won't be, uh, or won't be with us for, for too long. But this is the, the reality. So I think by listening and and demonstrated empathy is how we are bringing this this element of our culture in, into into action. And the last one is. Uh, something that one of the statements that we say we embrace the impossible and now we we need to we are at the forefront and uh, and we want to be the leaders of innovation and creativity and uh, and we need to be resourceful and it's in times like this where there are opportunities to partner with companies like yours and you know we never thought we were we were going to be able to implement a, a process like the one we did and and we just did because you need to rethink and reimagine uh, everything that that you do uh, and that's and that's how uh, our culture really supports us and and play a, a big role uh, during this, during all this process. Yeah. So so what you are saying is, um, it is also in times like these that that uh, you know uh, uh, 
things that, that prior seemed impossible or yeah, were very hard uh, uh, to, to implement. Uh, now, uh, you know, it's uh, in crisis, everything uh, is, is, is possible. Is that what you what you are saying? Yeah, exactly. You you just uh, need to you you are forced to look uh, into things with the, in different perspective and uh, and and maybe work on on situations in angles that you didn't expect you were going to do. And and I think and I'm sure it's not only us. Uh, many companies uh, from hospitality and from other industries had to rethink the way they were doing things. And yeah. and and I'm sure I th- I I. I an eternal believer that it is always good from 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 the crisis you go through and 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 we as a company we have learned a lot to do over the last few months and and i think we will come we will become a, a better and a stronger company the same way that we are becoming better individuals as well i mean i just we never thought we i mean we are in the, in the hospitality business how is it possible that i can work from home where uh, all our industry is about being in the hotel with the guests and being close to them. And we've been working from home for the last few months. And, and mm-hmm. I, I can tell you that we have a stronger team than we had before mm-hmm. because the, the interaction, the collaboration uh, is much better. Yeah, just to, to, to get back uh, uh, on, on what you said, you know, you are working from home. Um, and you know that that also created some uh, kind of uh, uh, special mentality uh, together. But but uh, Taylor mentioned that a lot of the staff, eighty five percent of the of the, the the staff, and 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 also some colleagues from uh, from the corporate office, uh, were not able to work because they were furloughed. And and I was just wondering how how did you. Uh, manage that how how we able to support these uh, these colleagues uh. yeah i can take that one um and as as you mentioned you know we all had to adjust our schedules and get accustomed to this new way of working um so we want to make this transition as smooth as possible for our colleagues who who weren't coming to the offices anymore or the hotels um, and if they weren't working we created these packets um, full of resources um, that range all over the place so I'll kind of walk through um, some of the really important ones that we found were the most helpful for colleagues so first thing we put in it was unemployment information um, by city and state so that colleagues knew where to sign up how to sign up whether it was calling or applying online um, and we closely monitored our, our mail and, and when we were getting in um, all that information just to make sure that everything um, went through quickly to help support our colleagues so that we can remove some of the burden from them, um, from some stuff that they had to complete. Um, We also compiled after realizing that the um, stay at home orders were gonna be a bit longer than we had anticipated. um, We compiled a list of job opportunities for our furloughed colleagues. um, Should they want to go out and and seek a new place of employment, um, we noticed while many people were let go, some industries such as grocery stores, delivery services, um, both for food and for products, those job opportunities actually went up. So again, by city and state, we put together um, lists of opportunities for colleagues where they could apply um, if they wanted to to go back to work immediately. Um, Something else that was really important in the forefront of our minds throughout all of this was benefits for our colleagues, um, both uh, mental and physical benefits. So we um, put out all the information from our, our healthcare providers to our colleagues. We show them where to go if they needed help for accessing a doctor, where they could go for COVID testing. Um, we wanted to make sure that every, every bit of information they had was easy to understand, to digest, and to act on. Um, and then we also provided a lot of detailed information on our telehealth services um, that became much more popular. You know, a lot of people weren't so willing to go to the doctors right now anymore, but things do happen and you might need some medical care. So we want to make sure they could pick up their phone and, and call a doctor or FaceTime with a doctor um, if they needed help. Another section was um, financial resources for our colleagues. So. Um, you know, when losing a job, that can put a big burden on, on yourself or on your family. Um, so we put in a lot of information on re- rent assistance programs um, by city and state again. There was a lot of cities who were helping with cell phone bills, with Wi-Fi, with electricity bills. 
So we just put that information in where you could apply and get assistance from these programs. Um, and then with this new work at home, you know, a lot of people now have their whole family at home. They have their children who aren't going to school all day anymore. Um, so we wanted to provide educational resources for parents to help with their children at home. Um, so a lot of kids were virtual learning, but you know, learning continues throughout the whole day. So we wanted to make sure that they were well equipped to, to help their children out as well. Um, and then we provided adult educational resources too. Um, we have a partnership with eCornell. So we use, we provided courses for colleagues that they could take um, if they had some time to enroll in those. And then to wrap it up, I'd say one of the most important resources that we provided was also just ourselves. So we made ourselves very available for any colleague who had a question, who, need help with, who needed help with anything. Um, we wanted to make sure that they had what they needed to, to go through this hard time. Um, so we, we gave them our phone numbers, our emails. We spoke, we kept in contact with a lot of them um, just to make sure we could help wherever. It's, it sounds like you've, you've done a lot to, to support your, uh, your colleagues. Um, and of course, uh, apart from supporting them and providing them with, you know, all the, all the necessities um, that they need, th you know, just to uh, just to cope with the situation. There's of course the the uh, the extra mile, and that that's engagement. You know, because people are sitting at home, they're not working. Um, they can they can cope, they can manage. Um, but of course, there's some sense of detachment uh, uh, from from the hotel just by not being physically there, but also not having your colleagues just. Uh, not having your your day to day uh, routine, so how were you able to uh, um, to manage that? How were you able to keep keep your colleagues engaged during this uh, time? Yeah, that's um, that was super important to us also, um, and I think Roberto mentioned it earlier. Ironically, we've found um, we're so far away right now, but actually the closest our team has ever been. Um, so we certainly wanted to make sure that we kept that spirit up. So we did a variety of virtual meetups or hangouts. Um, so every other week we have a coffee break. So similar to if you're in your office and you go to refill your coffee cup or get your water bottle to refill, um, you stop in the kitchen for a couple minutes and chat with people. It's, it's kind of human nature. So we wanted to recreate that. So we made virtual hangouts where people could come in for five or 10 minutes, um, talk to their colleagues, catch up, step away from their desk, you know, decompress a bit, um, and then go on with their day. So we found those very helpful. We did um, happy hours on Thursday nights. Um, so again, you know, the week was coming to an end. So we wanted to celebrate some of the achievements we've made. Um, again, step away from our desks, relax a little bit, get ready for the weekend. Um, so we themed some of those. So we had um, trivia happy hour, we had like a funny hat wig happy hour, um, and then we had. A, yeah, it promise was to, cute. to 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 send me some uh, pictures of of you and, and uh, Roberto uh, after the webinar. Then. I was about to say the same. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, so we tried to you know keep things light and fun during these. They're an opportunity to to step away from work, um, and then. We also, before um, the pandemic had, had happened in our office, we did a weekly meditation session, which, you know, was anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. So these were really useful for colleagues and we didn't want to forget how important those were. So we uh, made those virtual and they're led by one of our colleagues um, who studies and practices meditation. So he um, just switched gears and made it virtual for us where we were, again, just able to step back, um, kind of reflect, maybe turn off our minds for a couple of minutes with all of the news that's coming in, you know, it can get a bit overwhelming. Um, so we found that one um, super important for colleagues as well. Then we also, our UK travel team or sales team, um, came up with a Strava um, exercise competition. So we, the goal was to travel together um, virtually. So we set a goal of traveling from our headquarters in West Hollywood to our properties in DC. So thousands of miles. Um, and the team all worked together, biking, running, walking, hiking, um, rowing, all to get all of those miles to travel to DC. And um, 
we actually enjoyed it so much that we are coming from DC back to San Francisco now. So we're on our, we're on our way back. I, I could have used such a challenge uh, to, to lose some of my uh, lockdown uh, kilos. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so aside from some of those virtual things, we also um, had some internal webinar webinars with our team um, to focus on the new situation and to learn how to work from home effectively. So this series was called um, Thriving Through Disruption. So it gave colleagues the tools they needed to really be successful at home and to stay engaged and to stay, to stay uh, proactive and, and on topic. Um, and then I'll just mention a few other very briefly. Um, we have a weekly stand-up meeting with all of our colleagues, and it's an, an opportunity to ask questions, to give updates, and we saw that some of the teams were starting to make it more interactive or more fun. So again, the sales team made their presentation sort of into a news broadcast. So it's like you're watching the news, and they had um, all like makeshift microphones or Strangely, we have a big Frozen uh, Disney population, so a lot of them had Frozen accessories. Um, so it's just a fun way to deliver news um, when at the time, you know, things, things weren't looking so optimistic. Um, and then we um, also just kept in touch every week with our human resource professionals and general managers at each property through weekly meetings. Um, so those were a really um, great opportunity to learn from each other. So mm -hmm. I think um, we were able to assess what's happening, who's coming in the hotels, how are things going, um, but most importantly, sharing that information of situations and scenarios was super important for us to be proactive and successful when we do fully reopen and, and, and reboard. And, and, and uh, uh, did, you, did you manage to assess what, what the results were? What, what, what has it led to? I mean, I, I hear a lot of you know, new ideas, new new ways of working. So, uh, and, and you mentioned before that you were far, far from each other, but closer than ever, so. Yeah, um, and I, I think it's a theme our whole company has, has seen, but we're just super highly more engaged now. Um, we've seen a lot more collaboration across departments. Um, we have our acquisitions and development team working super close with our sales team now and, and bouncing ideas back and forth um, of how to promote the hotels best and how to, how to uh, sell our product. Um, so our, our collaboration has skyrocketed, which is great. I mean, you're just working with people you, you wouldn't have thought you'd worked with before. Um, and then our innovation has also just become very forefront at the mind. Um, I think in a time like this, it's not normal, it's not what we're used to. So you've had to think on your feet a bit more. You've had to use mm -hmm. different technologies you haven't used before. Um, yeah. And you've had to change the industry a bit. So that certainly has been uh, one of the big results that we see. And then you have this all engaged, highly motivated team that is uh, craving for one thing and that is reopening. So uh, how did you prepare them uh, uh, for, for, for that special moment, uh, Roberto? Um, I hope uh, people is uh, uh, um, Formula One fans uh, because the project, uh, the project we, we, we work on uh, was actually called Pole Position. And Pole Position, what we, our obsession, when we start closing the hotels at the end of March, our obsession was, when are we opening? And let's let's get ready to to the reopening of the hotel. So, we 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 created this project called Pole Position to to get in in everybody's uh, in the state of mind of let's get ready. We want to be the we want to be ready to hit the ground running uh, and and making sure that we are we are, we are ready to sell. We are ready to open. We are a safe place, and and we are ready to deliver those great experiences to our guests. So the pole position project was a way to align every single division in the organization uh, from marketing, digital distribution, human resources, uh, and obviously all align and link uh, to, the, to the hotel operations. And, and, and we, we, were, we had to align marketing with the person that is going to open the door of the hotel and, and welcome those guests. So that's how, how we did it. That's... <clears throat> uh, that's a great uh, analogy uh, to to use, um, and and again uh, taps into that that engagement uh, factor. Um, but of course, 
you being an hospitality organization, there's a, there's another uh, uh, factor in place, another population that you need to engage with, and that is uh, that is your guests. Um, I think you have uh, uh, you know a following uh, of guests uh, that really like your brand. Uh, so so how? Uh, were you able to to engage with them? Uh, you know, the colleagues were looking out for the reopening, but I guess your guests as well. So how did you do that? Yeah, um, so as you said, we do, we have a big following of guests um, and they follow us through all different social media streams, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram's a big one. So um, we also had to, throughout all of this, make sure we were speaking with them. So we had a, a, a bunch of different initiatives that we launched throughout, but I'll just share a couple of my favorite ones with, with, with the group. Um, so one of our first initiatives that we put out was a Viceroy curated Spotify playlist. Um, so if you ever enter into to our tells, we have very specific um, playlists on for all of our guests to enjoy. So. We thought if they can't walk into our doors, at least they can enjoy the music at home. So we released um, Viceroy Vibe, which is a compilation of all of the music that we play. Um, and it gets you into that luxury travel mood. Um, so we, we sent that out to all of our uh, guests. And Roberto is going to actually pop that into the chat today. So um, if you'd like, you can download it and uh, listen to some of the music too. Um, then we also... Yeah, we did a Mother's Day challenge. So in the middle of May, Mother's Day uh, was coming up. So we worked with Hotel Xena, which is opening in Washington, D.C. in September, October. Um, and we collaborated with two local D.C. artists. And um, it was an opportunity for our following to submit a small note about their mother and to win a hand-sketched um, portrait of their mom to give to them on Mother's Day. So we had um, a bunch of entries for that and, and it got the word out to our guests that we know we're still here. It's just Viceroy at home now. Um, going off Viceroy at home and, and um, we sent out a variety of Zoom backgrounds to all of our guests um, so they could pretend they're at the hotel if they wanted. They could be on a beach. They could be on the mountains in snow mass. Um, so that was fun to see and we've been seeing a lot of people um, in different meetings with uh, using those. And then the last thing that I'll share quickly with you um, is we did a competition with Bill Walsh, our CEO, and it was Irish brown bread competition where Bill conducted an at-home video tutorial of his special family recipe for Irish brown bread. And then he challenged all of the followers to try to duplicate the recipe and to send a picture into us of their final product. <laughs> um, here is our winner, Isabella. Um, and the winner, the gift, was for um, a five-night stay at any Viceroy hotel or resort, um, but to give that to a healthcare hero. So this family oh, wow. and gave that gift to um, one of their friends up in San Francisco. So those were some of the ways that we communicated with our guests and kept them engaged and opportunities to uh, speak with us, essentially. Wow. Very nice. Very nice examples. Um, now, back to, to the, the big moment uh, of reopening. And, and of course, uh, um, from, from previous conversations, I know that, that in your industry, um, it's particularly challenging because you are used to deal with, with guests and then keeping the, the social distance uh, or, or physical distance uh, can be uh, quite a hassle. Um, so I was wondering, how were you able to, to prepare your facilities, your hotels uh, um, yeah, in a practical, physical way? And how were you able to ensure that all your colleagues understand how they um, yeah, should compose themselves and, and what guidelines they needed to follow uh, in terms of uh, health and safety and uh, how to uh, behave to guests in the new normal. Yes, um, of course. Um, so, that, so we, our industry is a very high touch uh, business. We, 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 it, what you're trying to do is connect with the guests, build that emotional connection with them, uh, being close to them, communicate, take them places, show them things. So 
Uh, now we had to rethink the way of doing that. Uh, it's still building those emotional connections. They're still building those relationships in a way that is that everybody feels safe and not only feels, but it's, it, it is safe. So then we developed, uh, uh, we, we kind of put together a, a group of amazing people from the company uh, and we developed the health and hygiene task force. And we work, uh, a group of 60 people, we work all together in in developing those new standards and, and these crystallizing in the in the image that you see on the screen, which is the Viceroy promise of, of cleanliness, which I'm not go, I'm not going to go into into any detail, but just uh, when you see this uh, seal in our hotels, it means that it's safe, it's clean, uh, and then you only need to worry about having fun. Uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm aware uh, that we are now uh, getting closer to the to the to the hour, so I will. I will tell you how did we do this? Uh, how did we then make sure that our our colleagues, our employees, uh, knew how, what to do, when to do it? Uh, because as you can imagine, as you can imagine, we had uh, a, a way of doing business three months ago. Now we are reopening our hotels, and and yes, the building is the same. Uh, the 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 chairs are the same. Things are similar but the experience uh, is changing because we are now in this so-called new normal. And there are so many processes and so some, some, some many new things that they need to learn. And, and we were very worried. How are we going to make sure everybody feels comfortable, feels safe, and they know what to do, when to do it? So then uh, we were very lucky um, and, uh, and we got in touch with, with you guys. And, uh, and that was actually through uh, uh, a colleague from from another hotel company, um, and and he was very kind to 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 share what they do in their in their organization, and 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 he shared as well your name, and that's how we started uh, the the engagement with with you guys. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to share with the participants uh, to this webinar uh, how Apical works and how we we use it, and this is going to be the. Taylor and I will do uh, uh, together, and um, we we so this app allows you to re onboard or to onboard uh, the the employees into the organization, and and in this in this phase, what we are doing is reboarding. So it's people that they have already been working in our hotels. They unfortunately were furloughed for a number of months, and now they are coming back to to the to the hotels. Uh, but there are all these new processes. That, that they need to learn. Um, so what we did uh, and the way we structure the, this app, which is an app that they can download in their phones or tablets, or they can also access through a desktop. We organize it in a way that we have a, a welcome back module, which we are activating around seven days prior uh, to day one on their job. And, and the things that we share with them uh, during this uh, uh, week prior joining the, the joining work is there is a, a welcome back uh, quick module. We have a there is a welcome back video from our CEO. There is also a personalized message from the general manager of the hotel, uh, welcoming them back to to the hotel. Then we take the opportunity to to refresh them about the brand and and we do uh, another. Uh, introduction into the culture of the company. We talk about the Viceroy ideology. There is a video in there and we invite them to reflect on the video and they can share their thoughts and, and feelings with it. And then in the last module they, they have access to before they join the hotel, it, it is a what to expect module. So, uh, and it's an introduction of all those changes that they will start uh, seeing once they, they, they start on day one. We also um, t tell them about uh, the, the, the protection they will need to, to do. And, and obviously we inform, uh, inform them about the symptoms of COVID-19 and that we ask them not to come to work if they are suffering any of those symptoms. And now Taylor will tell us about what is happening when uh, they are uh, on day one at, at the hotel. 
Yeah, so typically when we think of um, colleagues entering the hotel, new colleagues, or in this case, welcoming them back, we set up a whole day of um, information for them where we're all in a room, we're all collaborating, we're learning a lot of stuff, we're immersing them in our culture. Um, but when you think of the environment we're in now, you can't put you know X amount of people in a room, it's not safe right now. So we had to, when they came back to work, we had to get this information um, in a timely way and, and write to them in a safe way also. Um, so we have the new normal at Viceroy, um, which explains, you know, when you walk in the door, things are going to look and feel a lot different. There's going to be people wearing masks. There's going to be uh, plastic dividers and at uh, check-in and, and, and departure. So things will look different and we needed to explain that to everyone. Um, and then we wanted to make sure that we provided new ways um, of how to connect with your fellow colleagues. So, you know, Six months ago, you might have sat next to them in the cafeteria and talked during your break and and had a, a you know a meal together. But now you you can't sit right next to someone. We don't want anyone to to pass germs or or whatnot. So there's different ways to change your tone, to change your inflection, to to connect with with your colleagues. Um, then we wanted to make sure that we were providing up to date, accurate COVID nineteen information. Um, and something great about the app is that you can change it so quickly in real time. So if today coronavirus is X, Y, and Z, and tomorrow it becomes A, B, and C, we're able to quickly change that information and get it out to colleagues right in their hand or at their desktop. Um, similar to connecting with fellow colleagues, we wanted to um, give our colleagues the toolkit to connect with guests. Again, tone, inflection, um, how to smile with your eyes. Uh, smizing um, is, is a new uh, phrase that's been coined around um, hospitality, I think. Um, so we we wanted to make sure that we enabled our colleagues to be able to connect. And then we also put an emphasis on sort of anticipating needs instead of having a, a guest need to ask you for something. If you can anticipate what they need, you cut out that middle step um, and you're just able to provide a, a luxury service right away. Um, and then the last section here is the SOP summary. So as Roberto mentioned, we had our health and hygiene committee and our safety seal. Um, so with this comes some new standards and some new procedures in place that we needed to felt that it was important to give everyone a overview of it, every department and everyone that comes back into the building. So we're all on the same page. Um, and then once you are on the job, you, you would receive your in-depth training. If there was a new cleaning tool you might need or um, whatever it may be, you would receive your on-the-job training too with your manager so that you're prepared and equipped well to handle um, whatever may arise. Well, quick question from, uh, from, from my end, uh, Taylor. Thanks for elaborating on Roberto, but uh, do you also, um, well, we could call it pulse checks maybe, because I can imagine that, that people are maybe, I wouldn't say afraid, but uh, well, it's exciting to return, but also a different normal. Um, then you, of course, prepare them with this app and all the other amazing stuff you you did before they returned and then they are what in the hotel for a day a week uh, at some point i think it's important to to well to ask for feedback or do a pulse check do you guys do that through the app or do you have a different tool or system to uh, to check engagement and also well how, how people are um, feeling um, after returning Um, yeah, well, that's actually a very good question. We we decided to use the the app and the mechanisms that the app has to to create a small survey, mm. and and we were we were just uh, looking at the results, and and it seems uh, that in the majority of of our colleagues, they found the the app very helpful, um, the content very relevant, and and you know for us. This is a new process. Um, it's the first time that any of us is designing content for yeah. for, for this uh, new medium. Um, so it's really important for us to to know that we are doing a good job. If we are not doing a good job, then try to to change it as, as soon as possible. It seems that we are doing okay, which was great to see. Uh, but obviously, there is so many things that we could keep doing, uh, and and we want to to leverage uh, this technology to to do more. Yeah, great. And 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 have <clears throat> have only you and, and Taylor been working on it, or or who has been working on uh, on it, uh, uh, Roberto uh, within Viceroy? Yeah, thank you so much for asking this question because uh, today we uh, Taylor and I are representing Viceroy and are representing this project, but we have uh, the learning and development manager from our hotel in in Los Cabos, uh, Pilar. 
uh, and our uh, learning and, and, and learning and, and development manager from our hotel in Sugar Beach in San Lucia Jasmine. They, they together with uh, Taylor and I, the four together, we work on, on this project. And we had a very tight deadline because we, as, as all these things happened, we, we found about this wonderful uh, resource and tool uh, already uh, quite late in the game. And, and we were getting actually ready to open one of our, our first hotels. And, and we just needed to, to get all hands on deck and, and, and start designing and, and creating the content. And, uh, and, and it worked out very well. It yeah. worked out well because sorry, Peter, you were going to say something. Oh, no, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just about to say that, that from our experience, uh, only the four of you guys did a, did an amazing job in the, in the time you were given, I guess. So, so uh, I also received it from the from the team. Like the team from Fiverr did, did did something in um, in a few days or what ten days time or one and a half week, uh, which is incredible. So great, great job there, uh, Roberto and the team. Yeah, no, thank you. We, I mean, the, the content that was behind those images that you just saw that was we created the four of us together in 10 days which is which is wow. uh, yeah. i think it's, it's intense uh so we were dreaming about the the the, the app and and and, and we were walking so, in, so, in the middle of the night it's it's a good example of embracing the impossible uh Roberto, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah uh, in, uh, in the <laughs> what you what we, you said before yeah we had a great coaching and guideline from uh, from your onboarding experts and, and consultants that they they really ta uh, help us to navigate the the technical nuances uh, of the app. But I have to say, the back end is so simple and easy to 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 navigate that once you stumble a couple of times and and, and learn how to do it is uh, it, it is easy to to do. Nice. Yeah, and 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 you have already reopened uh, a couple of hotels, right? And and uh, you just said that you uh, were going through through the feedback, and and did it also show that uh, using our technology uh, has has helped and and, and supported uh, your colleagues? Yeah, absolutely, because it, it gives them a peace of mind to know. Before, before I'm going to walk into the hotel, which is a very familiar place, but now has become very unfamiliar because of this, uh, mm -hmm. all these new processes and the new situation everybody's living, by, by being able to share this information beforehand, I think it offers certainty, which now everything is so uncertain that all of a sudden you are able to offer a little bit of certainty. So that's super helpful. And then and then once they start, they, they start receiving these uh, different guidelines and, and, and way to do things. But let's not forget that at the end of the day, in our industry, what is very important as well is, is the on-the-job training they receive from their managers. Uh, so the, the app is perfect to give you an overview and, and, and to introduce you into how to do things, but then uh, they need additional support while, while, once they get on the job. Of course, of course. Um, and, and now that, that you are uh, reopening and, uh, you know, looking a bit back on, on the past uh, period, uh, uh, apart from deploying Epical, what, what is the uh, initiative that, that you uh, are most proud of that you have been doing uh, uh, in, the past, uh, in the past period? Oh, that's interesting question. You know, I mean, we, we have done so many, so many things. And, and as we mentioned during this call, the, the collaboration and the, and the team spirit that we have been able to, to create, uh, this, is, this, is, this is phenomenal. So I don't want to take anything away from that. But there is something that I think I, I really like, uh, which is an initiative that we have created uh, that is more guest facing. Uh, which is called contribution without compromise, and and what it means is that uh, every hotel we have hotels, uh, eighty percent of our hotels are in North America, and then we have two hotels in Mexico and one hotel in the Caribbean. So those hotels have uh, they have a preferred uh, hospital partner in their locations, and then um, every time a guest is uh, making a reservation through our. Uh, website uh, or through our uh, uh, travel agent, uh, they are unlocking uh, a 50% discount for uh, a hospitality worker, for these people that they, they have been or they still are 
in the front line of, of this pandemic. And, and there is people that they are, uh, they are really helping us to, to navigate this time and, and, and they are... Uh, you mean healthcare a, worker, I think. Robert. Correct, yeah, healthcare yeah. worker. Yeah. No, you you said hospitality worker, but that... Uh, oh, no, yes, yeah. thank you so much. I meant, yeah. yes, uh, yeah. he, uh, healthcare workers, correct, thank you. Um, yeah. So then they, they, we are giving them access to our hotels uh, to have a little bit of very well-deserved uh, R&R. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I think that's, that's uh, a great uh, initiative. And uh, I, I, I'd say to all the attendees, uh, start, start booking your hotel rooms uh, at Viceroy uh, <laughs> to, to, you know, support this. <laughs> um, you know, we, we are getting close to, uh, uh, to the end. Um, uh, are there, are there any things that you that you would do uh, differently looking back? Uh, I don't know. In regards to the, I mean, <laughs> uh, if if you are asking me anything that we have done through this pandemic, I, I I have to say I'm very proud and happy with the things that we have done and achieved. I, I don't think any anybody was ready uh, to deal no. with with the situation that we are in. Uh, and I think that's, that's when leadership shows and, and when, when, when a strong cultures show up. Um, and, and of course, uh, if you look back, most probably we could have made uh, better decisions here and there, but uh, who, who hasn't, right? And, and yeah, uh, I mean, course, <laughs> considering yeah. the, the time we are yeah. living in, um, yeah. I, I confidently say I'm, I'm proud of, of the things that we have achieved as a team. And uh, and then the the only thing is to move move forward, keep positive, and keep improving everything that we have started to do. Yeah, uh, Taylor, yeah. I don't know if you have anything in your mind that you think. Um, um, no, I, I think you said it great, and I'll just echo you. It, it's been um, very meaningful, also, to just see us connect further and deeper over this period of time. Um, through this unfortunate opportunity, you know, we said earlier, our teams really improved collaboration and connection. So that's been a big positive outcome for us. Um, though it came through a, a pandemic, it's it's really been inspirational for the company as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a yeah, just a, a small silver lining in in this yeah in this situation. Um, if there are any questions uh, uh, from from the audience, we haven't had uh, any Q and A. It's uh, been a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit silent on the other side. Uh, feel free to ask it now. Of course, the uh, uh, recording uh, will be sent, will be shared uh, with all of you. Um, uh, we could also include uh, the presentation uh, uh, of you guys, uh, Roberto and Taylor. Maybe the Spotify, um, the Spotify link as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, the, the Spotify link is already in the chat, but of course, chat. please include it, include it in the in the email. Yeah, it's okay. pretty. Definitely do that. Definitely do that. Um, so uh, no no questions from the audience. Uh, we have asked you a lot of questions, and uh, which you have been uh, able to answer. Uh, yeah, brilliantly. Um, some great examples. Uh, of how you were, were able to cope with this uh, situation. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your, uh, for your time now and for, for preparing this. Um, and I hope to, uh, uh, to see you someday in person in, in one of your hotels, you know. Uh, <laughs> never, never give up dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's it's been a pleasure uh, uh, hosting you, uh, Taylor and Roberto. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Extremely thank appreciated, you. and um, have a great day. Yeah, thank you for yeah. having us. It's been phenomenal. En enjoy uh, your day today. Thank you. You too. Bye, bye uh, to so you, bye. and bye to all the attendees. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.